is up guys, Eric Janicki back here with another video. So excited. <laughs> I got my girl, Ida, is that what pronounced? Ida. Ida. <laughs> it's okay. Ida. Ida I have been Ida following Ida for so long, so excited. I DM'd her, I was like, we have to get a workout. You have one of the most insane physiques I've ever seen. And she was like, let's do it. I was like, no way. So thanks for joining me. Are you excited? I'm super excited. Low key, a little bit scared because I mean, you're strong and big. Don't be scared. Um, I'm a gentle giant. I will try my best to keep up with you. And I am super excited to be here. And thank you for bringing me to So Culture. I love this place. It's fun to get out of Venice every time and then. Let's go. I'm three weeks out. So I need some push from her, but I'm sure she's going to Help me get through this. And I have brownies in my system for you, so let's I, fucking hopefully go. Hopefully I get some of that, that <laughs> glycogen just through the air from you. Yeah, you bet. But without further ado, let's get it. Because we're going to start with an alternating kneeling pull down. The really, reason we're going to do kneeling is to stretch for that extra range of motion and to move more ergonomically with the pattern. So with, if you're underneath the pad, it's a little harder to come forward and then lean back and really get that scapular attraction. Yeah. So with this, we're gonna tuck underneath on both knees. We're gonna stretch to the top, really use this as an opportunity to open up the fascia, dig down underneath. We're gonna go from pronation to supination. So we're gonna reach for it, yeah. pronated. We're gonna come underneath, supinate, and we really wanna try to pretend like you're elbowing the fuck out of somebody behind you, really squeezing yeah, through that lower lap. Yeah. And That's what I want you to do is almost lean into the side you're pulling with, really like dig that yeah. underneath, get that and extra piece. Yep. Start with maybe like 60 or 70, see how that feels. Well, that's heavy already. All right, want to start with 50? <laughs> try to start with 50 and see how that feels. Okay. So you see Ida also has her lifting grips. I told her, definitely gonna need grips. I actually brought my backup pair because if you train with me back and you don't have grips, you're gonna get absolutely destroyed just because it's so much time under tension. If you guys are training for hypertrophy, use grips it's gonna really help you I use Cobra grips personally she's got Taffer, Taffer. yeah whatever you guys want to use it's really conducive to helping alleviate the stress on your forearms good and I want you to lean back and across a little bit as you pull there you go that's fucking perfect cramping up off the two reps yeah it feels amaze balls amaze balls I love it great negative as you can see she's really controlling the weight She's really digging the elbow underneath, getting that what's called scapular retraction, meaning she's focusing on pulling the shoulder back and engaging the back muscle. If you roll the shoulder over a movement, you're getting a lot of bicep and front delt and even a little bit of rear delt. Whereas if you can really arch the back, pull the shoulder back, you're gonna get a lot more contraction through your lat, through your rhomboids, through your infra infraspinatus which is really right where that lat, lower lat ties into your uh, mid back. Let's just go 10 to 12 for this okay. first set. It's really Beautiful. important to like really think about folding yeah. your shoulder blades back. Yep. And when you do that and it just hits that perfect, perfect thing, nothing beats it. Nothing I beats it. I could have been standing there for hours. Like, there you honestly. go, right? <laughs> That's how you know you got somebody who loves the lift right there. A lot of people when they start training, they're like, oh, it burns, I hate that feeling. She's like, oh my God, I could sit there all day in that burn. <laughs> but, That's, how you, that's that, how you know we're crazy. I mean, you have to enjoy the pain. That's gonna sound very weird, but you're gonna, it's gonna be uncomfortable. And you wanna have the uncomfortable feeling to actually get in to that next level of yourself. It's a mental game just as much as a physical one. So Ida, while I do this set, why don't you tell my following, how did you get into fitness originally? Like, have you always been an athlete? No. <laughs> no, that's um, surprising. So I grew up in a family where like, music and dancing was a big thing. Uh, I have a lot of sisters and one brother that I never lived with. My uh, dad fought really hard to get me into like track and field. I tried. I also tried volleyball. Didn't like that either. I realized very early on that I was like a, a solo player and not like a big team player when it comes to sports. Uh, and I, my neighbor had like this trucker yard. So he had a lot of tires and logs and big stones and stuff. Uh, and he needed help when I was like 13. He's like, can you help me move this? And that's when I figured, shit, I'm strong. <laughs> um, so after that, I did like strong men things. Oh, no way, I know yeah. that. And then I found a gym <laughs> in my little small town and the owner was the only bodybuilder in town. And he was like, okay, you're a little bit too young still, but if you go in here and you actually do it the way that I say that you can do it, you're allowed to. So I was 14 and I found the gym. Still remember the first deadlift I did. Still love it to my core. And yeah, when I was 19, I moved away from that little small town and started to be consistent. I educated myself and yeah, I'm 33 now. So it's 20 years of lifting. Wow. 
Yeah, and people think, how long did it take you? I probably should look better than I do. Hey. It took me 20 years, but. You look absolutely insane. <laughs> what? got you into fitness? Honestly, the biggest thing was for me actually athletics. I played football and lacrosse growing up and it was kind of the joke I always tell people is I used to think that I was lifting so much to be better at sports. Once I was done with football after college, I realized I was playing all the sports so I could lift more. So I really loved the gym. I always kind of used it as like a lab in the sense of I always want to try new exercises, new variants and people would be like, who taught you? I'm like, oh, I was just messing around. Yeah. Like this, for example, nobody taught me this. No, it's I... just a matter of like understanding how things are moving, contracting, what's really feeling like I'm getting a lot of efficacy out of. So yeah, I've always really loved the gym, love fitness. And then I was working in finance, that's what I went to school for. And I was like, oh my God, I hate sitting behind a desk. I hear you. And so I was like, let me uh, take the fitness thing more seriously. Started doing some private training clients on the weekends. Remember, let's alternate these right and then left. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What we can do, this set, I want you to try something different too. Okay. I want you to go three right, three left. I'm gonna do the same right. thing next set. So three left so you can really hold that contraction and then three right. So that's another variant you guys can go on something like this if you're doing alternating. You can go like two or three of each to kind of hold that contraction on one side. So the only, only other modification I make is hold that supination on the up so you can hold okay. onto it through the lat. Feel that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now rotate, then dig. Squeeze and then hold on to that on the negative. Hold on, that's supination. There you go. Feel that difference? Yep. Crazy. Boom. Nuts. So what I was explaining to her is I was having her hold on to that supination because that's where you're gonna really hold on to that contraction through the lat. When you rotate, you're gonna start to rotate into the rear delt. So when you come here, holding that negative with that palm facing towards you, it's called supination. You can think of it as Pronate, supinate like a bowl of soup, so you want to have a palm towards you. So you're going to get a lot of lat contraction. When you're doing more pronation, you get a lot more upper back development through the teres, through the rear delt, through the traps. So really that palm down variant, palm in, supination is going to get more lats, mid back, infra, infra spinatus. So how many times have you been competing? So I competed in the WBFF for a few years, got my pro card in a muscle, as a muscle model. Mm -hmm. Competed at Worlds, and I was like, I think I'm good on this in Vegas like a few years ago. So that's when I was like, every serious every bodybuilder is really in the MPC IFBB. So anyone that really gets taken seriously. So I was like, let me switch over. I'll do classic physique. So I did classic physique last year, won a regional show in Anaheim, took the overall, and then I went and I got second in the overall for a pro qualifier. So that one hurt, but it made me really like reassess what I needed to do to kind of close the door. So. Yeah. I got right back into it and started training and I absolutely like exploded because I took a really big off season. Yeah. And then realized I wasn't gonna make my classic physique weight cap anymore. So now I'm competing in uh, super heavyweight, which is scary, but we'll see how it goes. So I got NPC USA, it's like the biggest amateur show in the country in Vegas wow. coming up in uh, three weeks. Three weeks. Shit, that's big. three weeks from today, actually, it's crazy. Yeah, fun. <laughs> I'm excited for him. So Thank you. Yeah. Have you ever thought about competing? Yeah, I, I've done seven shows. Oh, I didn't know that. So, and, and, and I think that many people don't know this about me because my former account that started my fitness journey got hacked no. and thrown away. So I needed to restart my entire Instagram career, if that's what no you want to call it. Um, so in there, I had so much information and so much footage. But all of that is gone. That sucks, I'm so yeah, sorry. I did seven shows, uh, figure, I uh, loved it. Um, I got four wins, Hell yeah. championships, titles, but I never went pro. So that would be like the next thing. Is that a goal for you? It's not. It, it was for a while because I was so like into it. But nowadays I'm more so like, do I need it? <clears throat> for what do I need it? Uh, and stuff like that. So for me, no, I'm not. Right now, um, I'm satisfied where I'm at. Getting stronger as you go, I love it. That's pretty much what Hennig always says to me. You're always stronger in like your last set. It's a good place to be. Yeah. It means you're getting, starting to really fire through. You can see how much activation she's getting through her lats. So this is what I was talking about, the infraspinatus right here. You can see it's even engaging all the way through there, mid back. It's gonna be a really like dramatic low lat variant, supinated grip. We're gonna drop just one knee down. We're gonna use this to plant for leverage, our other arm, and we're gonna get really good contractions here. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna turn the body facing this way. Big ass stretch Ooh. underneath. 
back to neutral, reach for it. So as you can see, I'm reaching up, tucking underneath, squeezing. You guys should see this entire shoulder down to the back is just looking totally insane. Like look how he reaches out and then really, really pinches at the bottom. Yeah, a big, big part of the set, like really dramatic stretch and the way you angle your body allows you to almost, it connects almost like through your hip. It's crazy how much, how deep you get that contraction. So here, I feel that stretch all the way through my like, All the way through the psoas. Basically through my, yeah, psoas. Cause you can my, see it here too, like you can see the, the clips, like all of the striations on his back. Yes. Yes. Let's go. <sighs> Whew. Three weeks out, giving it everything. You're doing it. Like doing that, it. that was really fucking impressive. Thank you. So when, when did you notice that you love to tap into this is just me and this market, this machine, and just be there? Honestly, like five, six years ago is when I really started to focus on like that crazy mind muscle connection, yeah. stretch me, hypertrophy, big range of motion. Yeah. And trying to feel like all my movement patterns almost like therapeutic. That's why I tell people like train long to remain long. So if you train everything, all your sarcomeres, what makes up your muscles yeah. in these shortened range of motion here, here, it's gonna shorten everything. Yeah. So if you train hyper long, you don't even need to mobilize that much because you're spending so much time in that stretch position yeah. that your body remains healthy and everything's lengthened, those sarcomeres are trained in those fullest ranges of motion, so. Because I mean, that is pretty much one of the mo most like problematic things amongst a lot of people that bodybuild is that they get super short. I'm, gonna, I'm one of them because I'm super bad at doing my mobility work, but I could absolutely do, as you say, to really think about lengthening everything a little bit more than I do. It's a really good pointer. The opposite, more and more, more, and then you're gonna go palm up. Oh, palm up. Palm neutral, and then you're gonna go to supination. Yep, you're gonna stretch that way, and then you're gonna pull in across and over this way, actually. So you're gonna move your whole body over this way. Okay, I need, so, to, I need to think about this yes. for a second. So drop the body. There you go. There. Oh, okay. Now hand there. And now I want you to come up and then reach here. Neutral. Feel that all the way through here. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna boom. Oh, this is really twist and turn. Okay. It's crazy like how aesthetic that looks too on her. Like you just see it like makes sense ergonomically. Yeah, there you go. Give me one more with control. And I'll speed it up for two to three reps. Big drive, good. Oh, holy crap. I got myself a new favorite exercise. You can like, I feel like I am like 10 inches taller. Yeah, already. baby. And this side, it's my bad side. So my so, entire left side right. is compressed. So let's see how this works. I gotta be good. Gotta so be remember, good. left knee is gonna be always that pulling hand, that knee is gonna drop, because that's how you clear space. So that one on that yep. side. This side. This side. And then you're gonna turn the body this way, other way. Yep, yep, yep. And then you're gonna move over a little bit that way, a little bit. And then like you're gonna that. use that to leverage. There you go. Nice, nice reps. These look perfect. How are they feeling? It feels like I'm doing it wrong, but I think it feels good. You're but... doing it right. Okay, cool. It feels really good. The only thing I say, I'm fully supinated at the bottom. Okay. So neutral. Neutral to fully supinated. There we go. So we're gonna do rope pullovers. What I want to do is see that same thing. To hit lats, you want to be almost. You want to be more palm up on these. So you don't want to go here because that's gonna hit more like mid back. You want to if you want to hit really lats, palm up. We're gonna pull back. What I want to do is actually match the angle of my upper body with the angle of the cable. So a lot of people do pullovers here, but you're gonna get so much rear delts and triceps. So what I'm gonna do is leverage over it, keep the the impetus in my lats, squeeze underneath. And slow on that eccentric, keeping those palms facing up towards the ceiling. Big ass stretch. As you can see, he's also doing that slight arch in the upper back that I'm talking about often in my videos too. Like, see, it's like posture, but still forward leaning, but posture. Yes, he's stretching the lats out and then they fold in. It's contracting everything, releasing, getting a stretch, and contracting. Do you have your reps already made up or you just go for it? I go for Fuck it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's how I roll too. 
Everyone's like, how many reps did you do? I'm like, I have no I fucking clue. I cannot count. Yeah, exactly. That's why I stopped being a personal trainer on site because my clients wanted to murder me every time. <laughs> You're like, three more. They're yeah. like, how many I've done? You're like, three, just do three more. <laughs> yeah, you just know. When you know, you just know. And you want to be able to fully engage the muscle. You want to feel it. You want to fill it up with blood. That's so, what we do. So it's way more important to really engage the muscle and go as close to failure as you can if you're trying to get hypertrophy. You saw I did probably seven to 10 with a negative. Then I fired through eight to 10, like what I call burnout reps, to really pre-exhaust and then exhaust the tissue. And we talk about a lot, hypoxicity, Phil loves it. Basically what that means is by inducing more hypoxicity in the tissue, you're reducing the amount of oxygen and you're going from small to large, slow switch to fast switch muscle fiber. So you're getting a lot more hypertrophy towards the end of the set when you've been digging into it, digging into it, digging into it. Then I fired through those faster reps. Who's getting so much hypertrophy on those last like yeah, five absolutely. to seven reps. Couldn't agree more. I call them pig set, by the way. What are they called? Pig set. Pig set? Yeah, like a, uh, like a pig. So pig out set, pig out set. I don't know what Fuck that it. comes I love from, it. I'm gonna call them pig sets from pig now set. on. Pig set. <laughs> She's fucking pigging out on this one. She you said, get she all said, the angry net. Like... She said I'm not letting any any of this fucking feed go to waste. <sighs> yeah, she just fucking ate that set alive. That's how you do a pig out set. Hell yeah. <sighs> oh, all right, second all. set. What are you guys gonna see? I'm gonna stagger stance on these because when I go heavy enough, it pulls me forward so hard that it's actually gonna help me to stagger and keep my weight back. So you'll see. I use a little bit of a stagger variation. It doesn't really matter which leg is back. Nice. How'd that set feel? Good, amazing. Good. I, do have a, I do have a question for you. So, mm -hmm. I, I get it all the time, obviously, with like, oh, you're so fucking big. Like, you like, you should like, I liked you more when you like were a lot smaller. I'm sure you, I mean, I've seen the comments. I'm sure you have pressures of like lurk, looking a certain way, especially as a female fitness athlete. How do you handle the, the comments, the hate, people wanting you to look a certain way? And like, how do you balance that with your own goals and like what you want for your physique? Like, is that difficult? Do you found like, you obviously have so many fans, but you probably have as equal amount of people of like criticizing your physique. So like, how do you manage that mentally? I mean, first and foremost, it's very important to remember that you will never be everyone's cup of tea. Uh-huh. Honestly, it doesn't matter how big or small or ripped or obese you are, there will always be people that love you or hate you, but they will always be based on their own insecurities. Insecurities and also their own preferences. Like, I will not like everyone that comes to my page either. It's just like, I'm a very open person. I love people, I love being social. Uh, and it takes a lot for me to dislike a person, like a lot of a lot because I'm also not a drama queen. So yep. if I don't allow drama into my life, it's easier for me to handle when things are actually being like butchered towards me. Like I hear every day that I, I'm gross, I look like a man, uh, that I probably am filled with trend and all <laughs> other things. And I'm like, if that's what you think, go on and think that that's the thing because I cannot prove anything. My true fans or the people that follows me and believes in me, they will be like, whatever Ida says goes. Yeah. And they will trust me to what I am. And you can never please anyone else. So if you are pleased with you, that let that shine through. And the thing is like, if you're into this, if you're doing this, you will never be fucking pleased. And I think people need to realize that I always have a new project. Like, yeah, I want to get leaner. I always want to get leaner because that has been my hardest thing. Hence, we also stopped competing because I had a really, really hard time. Mm -hmm. I was never the leanest on stage. I won due to my shape, like my, my, my symmetry, but I was never the leanest one. Yeah. I love food. <laughs> I also build muscles like that. I can yeah. be on a deficit, like a huge deficit, and still gain muscles. Yeah. And people don't understand that. Yeah. And if people aren't educated enough, stop pushing me and my ability to do this. Yeah. And I think like in my 20s, it was a whole different thing. I was so kind of consumed with all the negatives. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't know, something switched when I was 30. I was like, oh, yeah. whatever flows your Love boat. That. Like, I will not like everything that you like. And that's okay. I will still respect you as a human being. Yeah. But don't, don't hate on me because I will be doing my thing anyways. Like, don't, don't spoil your energy because I will not spoil my energy on you. Oh, yeah. But I love that. It is hard. It is yeah. hard, though. I think that's a good like takeaway. Like, 
So I see people on social media, so easy to be a keyboard warrior. So if you're gonna put like let people have that power of you, you're letting them live rent free in your head. So you're letting them affect the way you live your life. I get the question all the time, it's like, do you really wanna get bigger, bro? It's like, this is like my life. Like think about me coming to the gym and not wanting to like, I, I, my goal is a hypertrophy train. If I'm here not trying to get bigger, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, sure, it might not be for you, but I'm here to grow. Like, I'm here to train like this, not to maintain or be like, ooh, let me downsize a little bit. No, fuck that. Like, I'm here to be the best version of myself. So like, stop questioning me about like how I want to look. Cause people come to me, do you like think you're too big, bro? It's like, if I thought that, why would I literally be here doing what I'm doing? No, I don't think I'm too big. So live in your own like space, do what makes you happy. We're above 30 now, so we have the hindsight and the bandwidth to understand. Like, there's gonna be so many people that don't understand nor are ever gonna understand what or why you do what you do. And you just have to run your own race and have your own goals. And we have both have close to well over cumulatively a million followers each on our platforms because people, there's plenty of people that do believe in us and they do want to see us do well. So that's the people you got to lean into and do what you're doing for. Yeah, because at the end of the day, like for me, I go to the gym to get my mind straight. I have so, like my brain is so hyperactive that I need to silence the noise, otherwise I cannot focus. So for me, this is purely physical because otherwise I'm seated behind a desk and I know that people don't see that, but the majority of my time that I'm away, I'm behind the computer helping people yeah. and not here working on myself. Yes, this is three hours maybe of my day, but I don't do jack shit else than that. <laughs> it's three hours at the gym because it's my zone, that's my happy place. I actually don't aim to get bigger, but I want to place the right thing on the right spot. Exactly. So that's why I go and do it because I know that I am in charge of my physique. And if I want to downsize to fit the norm of the society, I'm going to hate myself. Yeah. I want to fit my norm. And whoever likes my norm is welcome to join me. And whoever doesn't like it, I don't care. There's the door. There's the door. There's the I like. <laughs> I do me. Hell yeah, yeah, I love that. All right, let's fucking keep pressing this working yeah. out. Chest up towards the top of the bench. We're going to reach for it. Maximum stretch. Yep, we're going to get a big stretch here. Chest supported so you can really reach for it. Pull palm up. <sighs> Squeeze those lower lats. What was the name of that <sighs> series when we were kids? Turtles? Turtles? Ninja Turtles. Turtles? Yeah, you look like a ninja. I'm going to call you Ninja. Ninja Eric. I like how she just says turtles. <laughs> so you have like a shield. It was really visible as your shield. So. I know Phil was filming from the wrong side. He was like, let me film from the part where you can't see your back at all. This will be perfect. I don't think that you ever will be able to not film your back. <laughs> it's wide as a barn it's door. Wide. Okay, Thanks I'm going to stop giving you the compliments now. Aww. Enough is enough. Now let's just compliment each other the whole workout. <laughs> this one's not about the weight. It's a lot more about the control, the contraction. Yeah. Because the thing is, when you're a female, you have something on, on, on the front, in the front. Yes, you have. That is just fucking in the way. I have, the, I have those too. They're not as big as yours. Uh, no, but almost. 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 But yours are muscles, mine are fake. Let's <laughs> not pop them. Okay, should I go up further? A little or higher up, yeah. I got you. Okay, that. There you go. You good? Yep. All right, let's try her stance. This is crazy. It looks so good. How's it feeling? Good. Good. I'm creating a turtle myself. Yeah, look at how much she's getting that stretch. So you see how she's reaching, turning the palms over it, getting a huge stretch to the back, big contraction. Oh. And it puts your back on a complete island. With this angle, you can't use any momentum. It's all back. Oh. Uh. And I go. Oh, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you know that you're contracting good if you are like feeling like you're strangling yourself. Yes. Oh. That was good. I'm gonna try the Eda <laughs> stance. My, my legs are too short, I couldn't be on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> do I look as cute as you when you do it? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if you get your toes down here. Oh, yeah, uh, there we go. kind of looking cute right now. Right? Yeah. With my cute pink pants. Yeah, I'm still a turtle. The pink ninja turtle. <sighs> more? Two more. Let's go. Oh. Yes. One more. Come on, let's go. Oh. I didn't have it. Didn't have it. <laughs> I, I was like, didn't I don't have, have, to have, have it. it. It was a little bit too heavy for oh. one hour. <laughs> That's okay. That was good. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Nice spot. Thank you. Okay. I think this is going to be Ida's favorite exercise we do today because she mentioned she has trouble connecting one side to the other. I think isolateral, isometric, single arm movements might be the most underrated thing for back 
for two reasons. Number one is the isolation component. You can literally focus on one side than the other and start to really correct any imbalances. Number two is that ergonomics of being able to move single-handedly. So you can really lean out, you can really squeeze in if you're going one side at a time, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're gonna do something kind of emul emulatory of a single arm dumbbell row. The vector of force is gonna be similar. We're gonna be going from low to mid, but the fact that we're gonna be leveraging on the bench with a cable allows us to have so much more control than a dumbbell row where that vector force is coming straight through the floor. It's harder for us to get that peak contraction, whereas here, it's gonna be coming almost from the side angle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna step back on the bench. We're gonna have this foot out wide. We're gonna reach, we're gonna let this elbow bend. We're gonna fucking stretch and reach for it. Pull underneath. This foot's out wide so you can really get, so look come on the other side of me and see how much stretch I get through that lat. And you see how I hold onto it on the negative, I'm holding onto it through the lat. And going from neutral to supine. Neutral to super, supinated, yep. Eric is actually showing exactly what I think bodybuilding is all about. For me, because when people ask me what it is, for me, this is an art form. And when you're doing such a precise work that Eric is doing right now, that for me is like the, this is what we do. And he's utilizing everything in his power to like just, he's contracting everything. Every little fiber is working. And that is how you build a physique that looks like this. Like people are too, being too stressed in general. Like they will not build this type of physique. You're an athlete, you're an athlete from the beginning. So you have a good foundation but it doesn't go fast. Anyways, like this looks so good. And the other thing too worth mentioning is a lot of guys look so tight on stage. They can't pose because they train everything so shortened. Yeah. They look blocky. You see guys walk around. You're like, oh God, that guy looks like he can't even like fucking wipe his own ass. But exactly. I want to be the contrary to that. I want to be a contrarian. I want to move still. I want to be ergonomic. I want to really be hyper mobile. And then I want you to pull and straighten that right arm and pull up. Yes, beautiful. Now bend that right elbow, stretch, ergonomics. Feel that whole back open through the hip and then pull up, yes. Go full supination at the top of the rep for me. Yep, yep, and now neutral, now supinate. Boom, fuck, right. that's beautiful. That rep couldn't have been better. And now I want you to squeeze, keep that supination, and let that negative out through the lat. There it is. So one thing that I think about often when I train back is to use my hand as a claw and not as a grip, yeah. if that makes sense. Absolutely. So I'm trying to relax in my thumb to exactly. just like... People try to squeeze the hell out of the grip, but that's why having grips is so helpful because yeah. you can stop thinking about holding on. What I like to even tell people is, you're pulling with your elbow, not with your hand. Exactly. So like your hand's just a conduit. You're pulling through your elbow. That's the most important thing. And that is a wrap. We absolutely destroyed back. We were gonna do some shoulders, but I was like, I'm toast. We got a lot of volume in that workout. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So, you know, tell me what you thought of the training. What were your major takeaways? My major takeaways is this. I freaking love meeting a person that is as nerdy as I want to be. That is like the key thing. Um, I love when people are present in their workouts and I really appreciate the hell, hell heck. I said heck and hell in the same sentence. Hell we'll out of you. Um, so thank you for in inviting me to So Cold today and my back is smoked. Hell yeah. <laughs> so honestly, like the reason I, I reached out to her and I respect her so much is because there's so many like female fitness influencers, first of all, that are scared of like having a little bit of muscle on their physique, but she works so hard to like have the physique she does. She does this for herself. She has such a respected community. She works her ass off. She's an amazing coach. You see all the transformation she does. So if you need an amazing coach, go and check out her page, go and check out her content. She is such an inspiration to so many people. So if there's one takeaway you guys can have is just like, how amazing of a human being she is. And if you can be on such a platform and still be such a nice person, because I know there's a lot of people that get to a certain level and they're not so nice. I won't talk about that. But, um, but I think that's a really big takeaway is like be humble, help everybody around you and like the world will get back to you. So go and follow her on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok, on all the 
threads all the new fucking platforms. We'll link her in the description below. But thank you again. I appreciate you. This was so much fun, and this is gonna be the first of many workouts for us. So. I really hope it will be, and I think this will like get me to my next level, and I hope that I can help you pound through the last couple of weeks with my energy, because I eat the sugar, and it doesn't. Yes, I need it. I'm just gonna like start drinking or sweat as it drops off. Yeah. Get some muscle glycogen. That was kind of weird, but fuck it, whatever. I'm delirious. We Three are weeks weird. Out. We love I will it. catch you guys in the next one. I truly appreciate you. Yeah. Make sure Hit that subscribe button, it means the world to me, it's free to you. I'm gonna be putting out some insane challenges, more workouts, more collabs with amazing fitness influencers. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Deuces.